This is the Quantum Controller, also known as the Tinitron 2000. And you might be wondering what it's doing in my garden. And that's a good question because the answer is at the very core of why I switched to iPad for music production. You see, I have a desk job and I didn't want my hobby to be a desk job as well. So when I switched to iPad, I wanted portability. But when you do music production on an iPad, you find rather quickly that you want to connect things to your iPad, like headphones. But there's no headphone jack on an iPad. So you need an adapter or a sound card or Bluetooth headphones. And then all of a sudden, it's not quite as portable. Being music production, you also most likely want to have MIDI controllers connected. And if you do, then you're definitely going to need a USB hub and a couple of MIDI controllers, a sound card and a USB hub mean that things are not quite so portable. And rather than being in the garden, you're back at the desk. So I built the Timitron 2000 to be a console to hide all these things or keep them together in one neat, tidy place. And in doing so, I have my sound card, my USB hub, my MIDI controllers, and a nice battery pack all housed in one console with an iPad stand that allows me to get my music production away from the desk and back into the garden. In this video, I'll show you what it does and how you can set up your MIDI controller to do the same. Okay, so let me show you how I have mapped the Launchpad Mini and the MIDI Fighter Twister to control. Essentially, the Twister manages the selected track or parameters mapped to the selected track, apart from these four knobs here, which control the four knobs in control. So you can see that turning these knobs here uh, controls the four knobs in control. The rest of these knobs apply to the current track. We'll come back to those in a sec. On the launch pad, uh, these two rows here control the 16 pads of control. So if I want to go to scenes, I click on scenes and now I can navigate to different scenes. The white button here is my shift button, so it takes me back to the menu. At the top here, I have uh, buttons mapped to my MIDI generators, which is the equivalent of going into this section here. But instead of having to click on here and then click on here and then double click to bring up something, I can, from any menu, say in the scenes, just navigate to my uh, instance of beats with this button here. So I have access to eight uh, MIDI generators that I can navigate to all from these buttons with one click. The next row is for scenes. So if I click here, I'm on scene one. And uh, these two buttons are for stop and play, obviously. And um, I can jump to different scenes. This row is for scenes. The next uh, two rows are for jumping to the channel. So if I go into the all channels mode, you've got see I've got 15 channels. The first four are mapped to my drums, shakers, loops, texture. Uh, the blue ones to the blue pads, the green ones to the green pads, and the purple ones to mix bus returns and master. So at any time I can just jump to uh, a track that I want 
and have access to the four pages of MIDI control. Um, double tapping on the uh, channel pad brings up the instrument GUI. Then uh, down here, these four buttons uh, are equivalent to these four buttons here, which bring up the selected instrument GUI, the selected EQ GUI, and whilst we're in here, maybe it's a good time to check out what some of these controls do. Because on the selected track, um, um, I'll just bring that into view, I can control channel volume, I can control pan, which is set to be controlled inside Pro-Q3. I have gain, and it's a limited range that I've set, uh, plus or minus 6 dB, and I've mapped this one to mid-side, you can see it's controlling two bands at once. Um, I also have sends A and B mapped here, uh, and then I have a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter. So um, if I hide that GUI and we go to sec track two and we can open up the GUI and now we're, tra we're controlling the selected track parameters for Skakia. Uh, these four bob button knobs down here are for um, FX control. So let me hide that, let's come back to track one and we can press this button to bring up the EQ GUI. These two buttons bring up the FX GUIs, so FX1 and FX2. Um, and these three buttons here are for mute, solo, and arm. Um, and these three buttons down here control the mutes, solos, and arms. Page. So from here I can mute and solo um, all tracks. So let's just press play and go to mute. And I can solos. So hopefully that gives you a quick uh, overview and a good idea of what I can control in my AUM session with Control, Quantum Composer and the Timitron 2000. Okay, so the conventional way to set up a MIDI controller to a MIDI device is to go into AUM's MIDI control and come down to the channel that you want. In this case it's control select the audio unit and you can see exposed are the four knobs knobs 0 1 2 and 3 so we would just uh, come in here and you can connect your MIDI controller to control and once you've mapped the four knobs you can control everything that I just showed you uh, to ensure that that happens you need to make sure you have the following routing my MIDI controller is the MIDI Fighter Twister and you can see here that uh, the MIDI Fighter Twister is connected to MIDI control. That's how the messages are routed from the MIDI Fighter Twister into AUM and then to the audio unit device. Mosaic Control is also set up to go into MIDI control so it can send messages to all of our other devices in our session. So this is the conventional way and the simple way to do it, but it's not the recommended way. The recommended way is to do it a little bit differently, and that is to do it like this. We route um, Mosaic Control into MIDI Control, and we route our MIDI Fighter Twister into control so there's a linear flow 
and uh, if we have a look at this in a different diagram we can see that we have the MIDI controller at the top um, and in my case that's the Timitron 2000 um, and it sends MIDI into control and control sends MIDI um, out to everywhere else in this flow here there's some advantages to doing this and one advantage is that if you have encoders control will also send many messages back to your controller in my case the MIDI fighter twister and when I select parameters they will be updated so my encoder is in the right position to start controlling that parameter additionally um, control has its own MIDI implementation so as well as controlling the four knobs in control we can also send messages to control the 16 pads from a MIDI controller and we can also send a bunch of messages into uh, control on channel 16 to control the active channel so let's have a look at what I mean by that I'll come back here this is the documentation which is available uh, and if we go to the MIDI implementation here and scroll down to this table you can see a list of uh, things that you can send to um, control so with the routing that I showed you um, uh, this one here where we're sending our MIDI fighter twister into control we can send messages uh, as listed here to control the active channel so for example if I send on channel 16 CC6 to control it will control the mixer gain parameter CC7 will control volume CC8 will control pan uh, I also have access to control sends EQ low high gain um, low pass filter high pass filter I have CC 76 to 79 to control my mix buses which means I can have dedicated parameters or knobs on my MIDI controller to always control the mix buses um, I have CC 87 to control the master volume um, and I have CC 100 to select the scene so on my launch pad uh, I send CC 100 with values 0 through to 7 to select a scene uh, and that is set up on my launch pad to be able to do that at any time I don't need to be in the scenes menu of control to do that down the bottom here there's some more um, parameters uh, CC values assigned to FX control CC 121 to 123 control mute solo arm for the active channel and uh, CC's 124 to 127 toggle the instrument EQ FX1 and FX2 GUIs um, additionally if I send the mod wheel in uh, CC1 on channel 16 it will control the mod wheel of the active channel to do this uh, you also want to control the four control knobs and to do that you need to send in CC's 36, 37, 38 and 39 and in doing so you'll then control the four uh, knobs in control like I do here um, uh, with my MIDI controller so it's a little more complicated perhaps to configure this way or a little bit more to get your head around but there are a lot more options I hope that helps see you in the next one